Good evening, everybody. I'm here with our friend Joe, who knows everything. And know everything, but I know a lot. If he doesn't know it, he's a man. He thinks he does. Um, <laughs> so there has been a format change in uh, the system that we use to do the shows. You can no longer post your questions on the uh, group. We can't see them. So on the bottom, there is a banner. Banner? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll call it a banner. What do you mean? There's a statement. There's a something. There's some words. <laughs> so to ask your questions, you have to go to our Facebook business page. It won't let questions come from groups. Right. So we're going to keep that up there. So make sure you go there and ask your, ask your questions because we won't be able to see you if you're in the group. Now. Tonight we're going to talk about the last one, I guess. <laughs> yeah, really. Tonight we're talking about dues. Uh, yesterday, Joe and I were talking in the morning, and we were like, "It's about time for dues to come out. That should be our next show." And a couple of hours later, it was literally like two hours. It was Monday morning <laughs> at like nine o'clock, and then statements popped out at lunch. So yeah, it, it, it's, so here we are, Joe. I'm going to let you get started and figure out where you want to start. All right. So this is a hot topic. Um, it's it's a hot topic both from the perspective of obviously this is the most expensive part of owning. Uh, we all know that. Uh, but it's also a hot topic because some people get a little confused on how they work and what they go to. And then we add COVID in the, in the mix this year and it's changed even more stuff. So we're going to try to get into all that. I'm going to talk about kind of the fundamentals of dues, of how all that works. Um, where you're, you know, where the money's going, all those types of things. And then I'll, we'll, we'll jump into a little bit on, on how COVID's going to have, have an impact this coming year and then years to go or whatever it may be. Um, some of this obviously is going to be speculation because I don't, you know, I don't work at DVC and I don't sit in the accounting group and I can't crunch these numbers for them, but um, I can kind of get an idea where things are heading. So we're going to, we're going to look at that and a few options that they have. So a couple things, just kind of some uh, paper, simple stuff to be thrown in here. Uh, important dates that I wanted everybody to remember. Um, first off, you've got what we saw this week, Monday, was just proposed budgets. Say, so I had a lot of people ask me, like, where's my statement at? All this other stuff. Your statement's not here yet. Uh, these are just proposed budgets. Uh, they send these out usually about a month before the annual meeting, which is next month. At the annual meeting, they'll actually go in, get board approval, and ratify these actual uh, budgets so that they actually go forward into 2021. But so, in the past, historically, these have been the numbers that they go forward with. Yep. So the, the big changes you would usually see at the annual meeting that they would maybe modify is if the tax appraisals came back very differently than what they proposed. Um, generally, DVC overestimates on the tax front just to be safe. Um, so if, if they came back noticeably different, they'll, they'll dial those down when the actual due statements come out. So, so the numbers that we've seen and thrown out there and you'll see here in the presentation are not, maybe not exact. They may change a little bit depending on, on if any of these components change. We right. have received our tax statements here. So yeah, they should, they be, should be coming out because most taxing authorities would usually do this about this time of year. Yeah, so. we've, we've had them for couple weeks. Yeah. They so usually good. DVC is working on these budgets way before tax season comes. So mm -hmm. they'll, they'll make their projections and then they'll have to kind of whittle it down a little bit sometimes if they overestimate too far. So keep that in mind. Um, so you'll watch, watch for due statements kind of usually in that mid December to late December range. It's always before Christmas, um, usually kind of in like the 17th kind of ballpark, I would say. And, and they do not come in a Christmas stocking. No. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want that in my stocking. Kind of. <laughs> One of the bigger bills I deal with. Hey, Merry Christmas, guys. <laughs> yeah, Merry Christmas. Um, so keep that in mind. So those are a couple of things. A couple more important dates uh, as we move forward into January are when when your dues are due. Um, so annual dues are based off of the calendar year. So keep that in mind. They're not based off of your use year. So even if you have a December use year, you're paying your 2021 dues in January of 2021. Uh, they're due on the 15th. Uh, you have a little bit of time if you forget to set up auto pay to kind of get that in place. And I put, we put January 31st cause that's generally where they try to cut it off. But I know that they, they will put you on auto pay really anytime throughout the year. Um, but you'll have to get yourself caught up as uh, long before. as you're current. Yeah. So, yeah. So if it's one of those things that if you forget and you, you're, you're trying to do auto pay in February or March, be ready. You're going to have to pay January, February, March, whatever that may be to get yourself caught up to that point before they put you on auto pay. Um, Dues are officially laid on the 15th. That's when they can start actually assessing um, penalties and fees and interests. Um, and you're gonna, we're going to get in here a little bit. 
it's amazing how many people actually forget to pay their dues or forget to put it on auto pay and, and get whammed, you know, slammed with fees every year. All these resorts, I was just looking just at Polynesians tab right here from their annual uh, revenue components. And last year alone, or I should say the project was $180,000 in fees and interest uh, that the, they accrued just from people not putting their, you know, paying their dues on time or forgetting to put them on auto pay. So don't forget these dates. Don't be late. Auto pay. We'll get into that here in a second. Um, monthly auto pay is still available. Like always, you got to have a US based checking account. I know there was this announcement a while back about credit card stuff and people got a little confused. They didn't actually read the uh, statement, the announcement. Credit card auto pay is not monthly. Um, it is an annual thing. They're allowing previously before you could pay your dues with a credit card, but you had to manually go in in January to do it. Go in, put your credit card in, run the pro run it through. Now you can actually put one on file and they will on the 15th just process it, but you cannot do monthly auto pay with a credit card. You still need a US bank, uh, okay. based checking account. Reminder, um, if you already have that already set up, you don't have to do anything unless you plan to change the bank account situation. It'll just roll forward into next year. Your okay. last your last dues payment for 2020 will be here in a month next month. And then you'll literally just start all over in January. Let, let, let's hit that. Just sure. if you are using a credit card, it is only to pay annually every January. It in is full. not monthly. It is an in full 100% coming out of it, whether you like it or not. Yep. So, so keep that in mind because I know there was a little bit of confusion because they announced the auto pay thing and everybody got all excited about it. And it's like, no, you got if you actually read it. <laughs> um, and well, I, I can post a screenshot to the group later, but it's it's very specific that that's going to be a one full charge on the 15th of the whole year. Um, other things to remember, it's interest free if you want to do auto pay from the US based checking account. So uh, you're not getting charged any interest. They're literally taking, you know, say your dues bill is $1,200. They're literally dividing it by 12 and charging you $100 a month every month, all month long, you'll finish it up and you'll start all over again. No interest, no fees, no nothing. Now there sure. are other options available to our friends in the UK. Go for they, it. Yeah, they have some different things than what we have here. So if you're watching this from the UK, this is not necessarily applicable to you, the payment method. Yep. I know like some of them use what they call a Resolute card is one of the- Resolute, yeah. yeah. And then um, in Canada, if they get that RCB, that's, Th th they'll draft that also every month. So those are those things, but this is for us based. Uh, and, and I also wanted to note too, on the annual auto pay for the credit card, you have to be a us based member. You cannot be any, anywhere else. So correct. Um, let's see here now moving on. So proposed due. So we, we, we got the kind of the initial numbers and there's a lot of information on the screen. So I'm going to kind of walk through a little bit of it. Uh, as you can see, everybody went up. Um, Alani was the winner, I think, at just basically pennies <laughs> is, is what they went up. They did really well. And I'll dive into that on why uh, their their rates seem to be pretty, pretty strong compared to others. Riviera barely went up, uh, which is fairly common for any of you new members. When a new resort's released, they really generally overestimate the tax portion because they really don't know what Orange County is going to do to them. Um, we saw this with Copper Creek as well, um, where actually Copper Creek's whole dues actually went down uh, that, that second year. Uh, Riviera is barely going up at all. And, and you'll see why here in a second, basically the tax portion that they estimated was off by something like, I think I came up with 55 cents per point that they ended up coming off. So um, yeah. those did really well. Some of the bad ones, uh, and I haven't been able to dig down because I was not able to get the uh, PDFs, but Vero and Hilton Head got hit hard again. We know that Hilt Bureau and Hilton Head have higher tax rates. Uh, their taxes are pretty extreme because of the beach and all that type of stuff that goes into play. I'm anxious to see if there's any other cost components that went in, uh, you know, as far as assessments out there. Their dues are already up, uh, up there just because of special assessments and things like that. Their, their insurance is outrageous. Um, so, so keep that in mind. But yeah, so some of the other typical winners, we saw Grand Floridians doing really well. Polynesians still doing pretty well, um, just barely crossing $7 per point, which is which is very strong. Um, and you'll see, you'll notice too, some of these, uh, and we'll dive into it, the dues are our direct reflection of, of what things cost to operate the resort. And you take a place like Grand Floridian that has a lot of points socked into a tiny little resort because the, point, the rooms are so expensive. Uh, on a per point basis, their dues aren't that bad because uh, you know they're only up having to upkeep one building, and they have a lot of points though socked into that one building. So keep uh, so right. somebody asked somebody asked today why is Animal Kingdom so high? Well, 
you've got the mm-hmm. animals there yeah. that you have to maintain um, and it, it gets expensive. Yeah, it's something I'm trying to dig through my paperwork here really quick. I want to say it's close to $3 million next Joe, year. Joe, you're cutting in and out. You're gone. Can you hear me now? Is that better? There you are. Okay, sorry about what's, that. What's close it's to $3 crazy, million? The crazy part is uh, it's close to $3 million next year just to, for animal upkeep at Animal Kingdom. $3 million is yeah. the budget. So, I mean, you take that on a per point basis. Well, we have three new babies. What do you expect? We got a gorilla and a couple of giraffes and... So uh, a rhino and <laughs> yeah, there's there's all these little components that go into each resort's unique and has something special. I said Animal Kingdom's got the uh, uh, animals to deal with. Alani's got Hawaii and and some of the special stuff that goes into there and the taxing components. Um, and then then you have all these other little things at each different resort. So that's the general overview. But as I said, keep in mind these are proposed dues. They're not the actual ratified numbers. We'll get those in a month. Um, they're usually pretty dang close. I don't, it doesn't usually move much unless they're really surprised by a, uh, you know, a tax situation. So onward we go, um, kind of getting into what dues cover and what dues don't cover and all those types of things. Um, on the front half, we have the revenue components. Reven- and, and, and I try to tell people this, we're part of a condo association. The condo association is like a business, right? It's got its income and it's got its expenses and they've got a balance and look good. Um, member late fees and interest. That's the one thing I just mentioned. I mean, you've got 180,000 at Polynesian is expected. <laughs> um, let's see your grand Floridian. They're expecting close to a hundred thousand dollars in late fees, uh, and interest. So that's how the, uh, the, one of the components they can use to make money breakage income. Uh, and we'll probably have to do a whole, whole topic just on this video. <laughs> on this topic. A very interesting one, but breakage income, basically any room, uh, that, that was allocated to member inventory that is not booked at day 60 before check-in is released back to DVC and DVC has, has to basically do two things. They have to try to rent that room for cash. And then from there, they have to take a certain amount and apply it towards member dues as revenue. Uh, when they finally hit a a cap, it's at 2.5% of a resort's budget. Uh, There's a couple different components, but once they hit the cap, then Disney gets to keep the rest on all the, all that stuff. And if you'll notice on most resorts, they, they usually get pretty close to capping out breakage every year for each one respectively. Um, then we have the member annual dues assessment. That's what we're paying in. Uh, that's the biggest revenue component. And then now we have parking revenue, which is somewhat new, obviously in the last couple of years. Um, I know we, you know, a lot of people hate the idea that Disney's charging for parking, but as far as DVC goes, it's actually a good thing for us. Um, take Riviera, for example, where 60% of everybody that's staying there at night is not a DVC member on pretty close to it. All those people that are paying to park, we get that money. Um, and, and, and Disney gets to keep a certain percentage based off of how they have to manage things and stuff like that. But a lot of it goes towards just paying the resort down, uh, in terms of our dues. So that's, that's a good, I don't use the golf course. Can I have my dues refunded for that? Yeah. Right. I wish. (laughs) Well, it'd be nice if we didn't have the, I always joke of like every year you'll see in the cost components, the member activity stuff. And half the time I don't even get to do any of that. (laughs) Man, that's a lot of money I'm paying towards. I need to start using these member activities. Let's Um, touch on that real quick. Honestly, from what I've been told is the Moonlight Madness will not be back at least for another year if it does come back. Yep. Just yep. to hit that. It costs us. It's not a juice component. So M- Moonlight mm-hmm. Magic is actually paid for the, by the developer as a marketing tool. Um, member dues don't pay for that stuff. Right. Uh, and a lot of people got all freaked out about it. They're like, it's not fair that we can't all go to Moonlight Magic uh, when we pay our dues. Dues don't have any, any say in that matter. Uh, that's Disney Vacation Development actually paying for that out of their marketing budget. Um, when it, when you see things like member activities, it's all the little things they do at the resort from, you know, scavenger hunts to, uh, coloring and craft rooms and those types of things. Um, so keep that in mind. And then some of it goes into like even things like at the pool and, and, you know, activities out there. Um, so the cost components, some of the big ones, administration and front desk is, is usually kind of like number three in terms of, of the cost components. Um, number one is usually transportation housekeeping usually right there with it. So keep those two in mind. Um, when it comes to transportation, we have to pay for a certain amount depending on the resort. So like at Riviera, it's an only a DVC resort. So guess what? Member dues are paying for the entire transportation cost related to Riviera because it's 100% DVC. If we go to a place like say beach club where we're sharing a, a bus stop with the actual hotel, members are paying an apportioned amount based off of how many, you know, a number that Disney comes up with is how much that we, we have to pay towards that total cost. 
So those are the three big ones. Some of the other ones are just really simple things like the legal costs is like a thousand dollars on every budget I've ever seen since the very beginning of time, except for at Riviera, it's 2000. Not really sure why it's twice as much at Riviera to, for the legal team, but whatever. Um, insurance. Insurance is another component that does go up. We all know it. Uh, guess what? Car insurance goes up. So does the cost to have you know insurance at these places. So th that's one that I've noticed went up a little bit this year. Cool thing is administration and front desk. I'm kind of jumping back to that. I was looking at, I, I cross-referenced seven resorts and for next year, they're actually administration and front desk went down everywhere. So you can, you're, you're starting to see that the ripple effect from COVID of laying people off, trimming staff, that type of stuff. Um, that one went down. Housekeeping and such went up. They didn't really lay anybody off from the housekeeping staff. That's still the same. And then we all know that they're phasing in the $15 minimum wage. So we got another hit with that this year, uh, basically a 20% jump again. So uh, that's why uh, housekeeping went up. Plus the extra cleaning and all this extra stuff that they're having to do and bag things. There's just a little extra cost. Okay, Joe, stuff. but why is that not offset with it only being 30% capacity because or 25% capacity when you've got 75% of the resort setting empty that doesn't have to be cleaned? Well, I think it's one of those things that they have to project that every room will be there and will be used if it's not. Um, in the end, we forget that even when a room goes unbooked, it's technically booked by points somewhere. It has to be. The, the system is in a perfect balance. We've talked about this in other videos and it's got to stay in a perfect yeah, balance. Yeah. Any room that goes unbooked is getting booked by points that either just didn't occur. Somebody loses them or they got mixed in from somewhere else from a swap or whatever it may be. So um, you'll usually see. So here's the thing. These are projected budgets. This is what they're expecting to see. If the actual budget at the end of the year, when they go back and audit their expenses is less, they have to roll that forward by okay. law. There was a statement that came out. June or July that um, it wasn't that we were going to get a refund, but that we may get a credit and we would find out that information at the annual meeting. I'm assuming that is coming from how housekeeping not being there, rooms not having to be cleaned, front desk people not being there, laundry, which is always a big, huge expense on on the budget every year, not having to be done. We've not heard anything on any of this, correct? No, they haven't. I mean, they haven't come out with it. And, and I've been trying to tell people because when, when all this new stuff came out, you saw in the group, everybody's like, I was expecting a credit. I was expecting uh, to save some money or whatever. It's going to be a credit on the dues, not a credit be, to us. Yeah, you're not going to get a check. That's for one. No. Um, but the second thing is we got to remember, <laughs> it's only a gift November, card. <laughs> it's November 11th. Okay. There's still two months, almost two full months left in the 2020 year. When when they, pro they have the d projected budgets for next year, but we don't have a completed budget for 2020. They actually haven't gone back and audited what expenses were and actually can sit there and say, we spent this much on this line item. We spent this much on this line item. Um, so by the annual meeting, I'm sure they'll have that number pretty well fine tuned where, what it'll be. I will caution people though. Yes, there was a lot of stuff that was shut down for three, four months, whatever it may be, but there's a lot of new costs that never were existed before that they've have to roll in and they've got to factor in. Um, simple things from, plexiglass and in, in buses and plexiglass, you know, dividers the between counters. staff on the counters. Um, they've got all this, you know, all these little, all these little things they never planned on spending money on. Um, now don't get me wrong. When you take, I'm just looking at Polynesian right now and looking at the housekeeping budget from last year was close to $5 million. Okay. That's, that's in the ballpark of what, 400 and something thousand dollars a month for housekeeping. Well, when you take out three months of housekeeping, you're looking at over a million dollars that they've, you know, potentially saved there. Now, keep in mind, they were paying people for a little while, not the whole time. Then when they went on furlough, they were still paying for medical benefits and all this other stuff that goes into play. So it's not, it's not going to be a complete wash. Like, Hey, three months, we didn't pay anything for that stuff. But you will see a reduction. You have to. I mean, that, that just makes sense that obviously they weren't spending that money. And we still have to cut the grass and we still have to clean the pools and we still have to clean the that golf courses. Won't go away. I'm sorry. Yeah, the, insurance didn't change. the insurance stayed the same. Um, security stayed the same. If not, maybe went up. More they probably. Had yeah. To, had to do extra work there. Um, yes, transportation went down. But again, there's there's an offsetting component there of. They had to do a bunch of work with transportation. And maintenance right. went up because they had to go in all the buses and resorts and put all the plexiglass and the parks. Yep, all that stuff. So, so, so there's there's going to be some offsetting. I would not expect three, you know, a prorated dues credit of 25%. That, no, that's not, not at all. Um, I would hope it's 
10 to 15% maybe, I guess we're going to see, um, you know, and this is where some people are really worried that Disney's going to try to cut corners and they're going to, this is where they're going to try to make up a little extra cash. Um, keep in mind people, this is, this is highly regulated stuff. Um, and we don't get to see the actual really detailed budgets and how much money was spent on every little thing, but this stuff is audited by the state. Um, they have to pay for an audit every year to have this checked on. So if Disney's trying to funnel money somewhere, somewhere secretly, it's pretty tough. Um, so keep just, just remember that. So, but back to kind of the cost components, um, front desk is usually number three, uh, housekeeping's up there with number one, transportation, number one. Uh, and that varies by resort too. So keep in mind, like a place like old Key West, that is all buses all the time. Um, their transportation costs have jumped a lot lately because they've had to, and then it's going to get even worse next year with them only ha having half capacity in buses or whatever. So keep that in mind. Whereas like Riviera, you're paying for the Skyliner access and things like that. So each Boardwalk one and Beach Club, you're walking. Bay Lake, you're walking. Yeah. Have, have to park yeah, so yeah. And stuff like that. So just, there's a lot of little things that go into it. Um, now, so we kind of jumped, we kind of jumped, sh jumped the shark here and jumped into the next slide, which was the burning question of what will 2020, you know, as far as this time we've spent off and what it's going to do for dues. Uh, I have a feeling it's going to be a very long drawn out talk at the annual meeting, probably one of the longer conversations they have. The question will be, what's it look like um, in terms of a credit towards annual dues next year? Um, I mean, for any of us, 10% it, it, would be nice. That's what 80, 90 cents off a point, which would be really cool. Um, you also have to factor in the tax part, you know, and where they come up, you know, with some of that stuff, but I don't, don't foresee it being just like, everybody's just like, Oh, they were shut down. It was completely closed. We, we should get all that money back. And it doesn't work that way. Uh, I say this, if you had to leave your house for a month and go somewhere else, guess what? You're still paying a lot of bills on that house, whether you're there or not. Mm -hmm. The mortgage gets paid. The insurance gets paid. Oh, you know, somebody like, cuts the grass. Reduced. The utilities are reduced, but they're not gone. Um, you know, insurance, all that type of stuff. So just remember that when when they bring up this announcement, we'll we'll find out here in another month at the annual meeting. So it's going to be an interesting one for sure. So that's kind of some of the important things. Uh, I want to. We'll get into questions here, but um, you know, I wanted to highlight some of those things, and and I wanted to kind of dive into. I was looking at. Um, all the different increases this year um, and trying to pinpoint where things had changed from budget to budget. So I, I pulled up a, a good like six or seven annual budgets from last year to this year's. Most of the front desk, as I said, all the, all the front desk and administration costs went down uh, at every resort I looked at. Um, annual audit was pretty much flat. I mean, that's the same everywhere. DVC reservation component, that was pretty much, that That varies just a little bit by how many. Uh, that should have gone up. <laughs> yeah, so the DVC reservation component is based off of how many points are in circulation by members. It's a percentage. Um, so it, it fluctuates, but it's by the couple thousand dollars type of thing a year up or down. It doesn't really change much. Housekeeping, obviously, we talked about that. They are in year three. I think it's year three of the five-year okay. phase in. So 2021 and 2022, we'll still have another phase in to go. So we're halfway there basically. So keep that in mind. Um, and let's see your income taxes. That varies obviously based off of the revenue. Uh, people were kind of surprised by this. And I was actually surprised when I first learned it. Um, the condominium associations that we're part of are not tax exempt. Um, even though they're not for profit really in the sense that they're, you're really supposed to offset costs with revenue and it's supposed to be pretty much a wash. They're not tax exempt. So every, every resort pays federal and state income tax, well, not Florida, but, uh, federal income tax based off of the revenue components. So, you know, like right here, I'm looking at Polynesian paid just shy of 150 grand last year and they're expecting to pay, let's see here on the next year, 116 grand this next year. So pay a little bit of income taxes. That's usually a wash. Insurance went up a decent chunk, but I think that's just general uh, across the board. Everywhere we go, insurance goes up. Legal stays flat. Maintenance. Maintenance actually went down on every single resort I looked at. Um, surprising uh, with all that they did. Yes. So, you know, and, and remember maintenance uh, is it, some of, some of the things that they had to do will go into the maintenance budgets and, and, but those actually would have been 2020. All the things they had to do would be part of the 2021 uh, 2020 budget. It wouldn't be actually be in effect for 2021. Um, it'll, it, it's already been spent. Uh, but, but the projected budgets, it was down everywhere I looked. And I think that's really what it comes down to. Primary maintenance function is to take care of damage and things like that. And they're not expecting usage as high this year. 
so obviously thing don't, things don't break as frequently. Uh, let's see your management fee. The management fee is a flat 12 and a half percent based off of the uh, total resorts budget. So that will fluctuate just by when, when the annual budget goes up, the, the uh, management fee goes up a little bit too, just cause it's just, that's a flat set number. Uh, based off of the percentage member activities those went up a little bit i think that part of where uh, part of what you're seeing is some of the increases in wages uh, and things like that probably went up a little bit for certain people i'd have to dig into that one a little bit security went up pretty much across the board but just by a little bit for most places so nothing crazy transportation uh definitely went up as i said transportation is probably one of those things that generally gets more expensive every year just because there's more and more people uh they had to do uh to plan this next year there. I, I know that they're running way more buses than they used to just because there's only a third full or whatever, 40% full. So there's a lot more routes. There's a lot more gas to be spent. Um, so the uh, Disney's transportation budget went up, which then DVC goes up. Utilities went up. That goes up for all of us as well. Um, the big movers in terms of the actual budget, the cost components, Disney did a good job. It looks like from keeping costs down, the big movers in the annual dues were taxes, um, one resort, one was it? <coughs> Animal Kingdom's tax rate was up 71% <laughs> from the year before. So clearly, clearly they've been undervaluing and under appraising that, that property. Somebody quite. at the assessor's office must like animals. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, maybe they value oh. those animal animals a lot. Uh, so, so that was, that one was up quite a bit. All Lonnie went up a decent chunk. Uh, the rest kind of floating around grand Floridian was like 24%. So taxes, the, you know, the projected taxes were definitely a little bit higher uh, than, than kind of normal. And then the reserves component. And I always tell people the reserves are there. We have to fund the reserves budget based off of, of timeshare law and Florida law. So the condominium association must keep a certain ratio that they keep up with so that when a major expense comes due, replace a roof, repave the driveway and parking lots, um, you know, remodels, refurbishments, those types of things. When those items come due, we actually have the money to pay for them when they actually happen. So they must keep up a certain percentage. And if you look at like a, a, a it's resort. It's just like your escrow account for your mortgage. They, yeah. they, when you first set that up, you buy your house, they put X amount of months, they collect upfront um, a few months, depending on when that bill is coming due. And they hold that. So when your bill comes due, they've got enough to pay it plus any increase. And they still have this reserve account that they're sitting over here holding on to. Yep. So it's the that same the thing. Account. It grows with interest. So that part's nice. That And so that's yeah. one of the revenue components is we actually get interest from it. But I mean, it's basically an amortization. They're, they're sitting there looking at what something's going to cost in the future and how many years, viable years they have left before they're going to have to replace it. And they have to keep up with those costs. So like right now I'm looking at this one. This was, I can't remember what resort this was. Um, the estimated current replacement cost for everything was $87 million. So if all these components went bad all at once, It'd be an $87 million bill where there's only, oh, this must have been Riviera because the number is really low. There's only 3.5 million in reserves at Riviera as of last year. So if all that bill all of a sudden came to you, we're in big trouble. So you jump forward and it goes up to like 8 million this year. And then they, they'll keep rallying it up until eventually, guess what? One of those big budget items comes through and they have to pay for it. Usually it's the remodels. That's the biggest thing that they plan for is the every seven and 14 year refurbishments. Um, and then things like roof replacements and stuff like that are even are farther down the road. So the reserves that the, for most of the resorts that ended up being anywhere between like Riviera's reserves budget jumped 55 cents per point. Pretty crazy. Luckily, it was offset by an actual negative reduction in taxes. So it kept their their overall increase pretty low. But most of the resorts, it's a you know, or five to seven cents per point that they increase the uh, reserves budget to get ready for that next big expense. Um, and you'll notice it too, whenever they have one of those big expenses and they take care of it, the, re the reserves costs actually will go down for a little bit because now they've got 20 years before they have to fix something else. And so they don't have to keep up with it as much. So those are kind of the things. There's a lot to it. I promise you Disney's not trying to steal your money and sneak it away and put it somewhere they're not supposed to. In the end, we also have to drink the Kool-Aid and realize that, um, our annual dues are, are higher than most timeshares. Uh, that's guess what? That's Disney for you. Um, and it's Disney paying Disney. We don't really know if Disney's charging us $10 to change a light bulb or two. Um, so it's, it's, you know, we kind of have to just say, you know what? It's worth the magic and we deal with it. Um, but all, all in all these increases this year were pretty mild. 
value. I mean, 5% is not great, but it's not horrible. I mean, you saw some of the Vero's and stuff, those hurt. Some um, of them are a little bit more than they were last year, percentage wise. Yeah. And I think, as I said, I think the the ones that I noticed were, were above their normal kind of meat average that they've grown. Tax is definitely a higher, jumped up this year. Yeah. It, it's, I think they're preparing for it. And I saw that they, I mean, some of the resorts went up 20% on their appraisals. So from the county. So we'll see how those those play in. So keep that in mind. And we've got a lot of resorts getting close in terms of their reserves. A lot of resorts are preparing for some big refurbishments coming up. Boulder Ridge uh, is already due a refurbishment. Saratoga is in that process now. Um, Bay Lake is coming up on one not too far off. I'm trying to think of the other ones. So so you got to, as you get Polly. closer, big, Polly, let's see here. So Polly's two, in the middle of one right now for regular rooms. For regular rooms. I'm trying to think when they're, so 26, they've probably got another three, four, three years till they get that first modest renovation. But you'll notice the reserve component will jump quite a bit that year or two before they're about to have a really expensive renovation. So okay. all in all, not horrible, not great. It's the most painful time of year for DVC owners, but in the end, well, and worked. we'll talk about it for another two months. Yes. <laughs> well, and, and we're going to have it. We'll have another video here in a month when the annual meeting is over. We'll go over everything, and I can promise you that the, the uh, COVID carryover question will be a big one. What day is that annual meeting? It should be the 10th. You're on your own, buddy. Oh, yeah. You're going to be gone. You're in California. I'm, I'm going to be having a baby on the 11th. Okay. <laughs> I'll be running this one by myself. Yay. Okay. <laughs> hey. It's all good. Don't miss me. Yes. I still may be around. We have one question, so we're not very popular tonight. Um, why is the breakage income a cost to owners? So breakage income is not a cost. It's a revenue it's, component. Yeah. It's a revenue component. So we actually make money. Um, as I said, it's capped at two and a half percent per resort. So anything above that two and a half percent annually, Disney gets to keep the rest. But it is an offset to use to a certain point. Um, I don't see breakage being around much over the next year because there's way too many points in the system. <laughs> um, it's probably pretty good this year uh, because there's a lot of people canceling, a lot of rooms open. Disney's probably raking in on the breakage front this year just because people aren't showing up. But that compression with all those extra points is going to hit in here in the next year. And, and I, I really don't see breakage being a revenue component much going into 2022. Um, and it'll balance back out eventually. Um, so but yeah, no, that's actually a revenue component. It's a good thing. But in the end, as I said, it's only to a certain number and then Disney gets to keep the rest. And we did have one viewer that said, just send the bill. <laughs> They've just already drink. drank their Kool-Aid. Drank it's the Kool-Aid. <laughs> drank the Kool-Aid. They have the gift card. They're ready to just go. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I was going to say that all you dues fans that want to want to get ahead, BJ's wholesale has their sale starting on the 20th going to 6% off gift cards. So uh, it's an extra little added savings for those of you that really want to buy them all and, and pay it all up front. Yeah. So and Sam's all, always has their discount. That's Sam's has 4% target red card, 5%. It's a good way to save on dues. Um, and the nice part is if you're on monthly auto pay, I, I've said this in a video in the past, I think. Um, but if you're on monthly auto pay with a checking account, you can still take a gift card in and pay that monthly balance. And it'll just so like say you owe $100 a month and you pay $80 on a gift card, then they'll only run you for 20 so you can do that every month. So I, that's actually what I do. I'm on a monthly auto pay and then I go buy gift cards like on the 10th of every month for that month's dues. And I go in and pay it that way. And I still get my savings. But then I, if there's a month where I just can't do it or whatever, I'm on auto pay and it keeps rolling. Yeah, I buy like $500 a quarter. So at the end of the year, I'm almost ready. Kind of, sort of, not quite, but anyway. Uh, Chris Illiard, Illiardi, Illiardi, maybe. Uh does the sale of contracts and purchase on resale affect the dues at all sitting inventory? Nope. Because it, it, when it comes to the resale contracts, you, those dues are, are paid regardless. Um, so yes, there's somebody not using their points maybe while they're in the sales process or whatever, but those dues have to be paid by somebody, whether that be the seller or the buyer or, or a mix of the two. And B knows all this stuff in terms of you know, who's going to pay for dues on what points and all that fun stuff, but if it, they, they're getting paid. And keep in mind, every every resort, even the even on the developer owner inventory stuff, on, on Disney stuff that they own, they're paying dues on those points. That's right. Um, it just, we don't see it because it, not part of our stuff, but yeah. every point's being, the, the dues are being paid on every single point. So if you buy a contract right now and it goes to, if, let's say it goes to closing today. Um, 
the 2020 dues have to be, let, no, let's say it goes to closing December the 7th. The 2020 dues have to be paid, but because we are so close to the new year, the 2021 dues have to be paid in full at the closing. So the buyer cannot carry those dues into the next year and set them up in January. I have to pay them in full right up front. Now, if it closes prior to December, I think it's the 6th this year, the 2021 dues don't have to be paid until January. But when it gets to a certain time in the year, the, that the next year dues have to be paid in full. So yep. there's no flipping around there with the dues. Down to it. Well, it's going to come down to like at this point, if you go to closing now, by the time they get everything flipped over, we're going to be into 2021 or close to it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, they're going to want Generally, it's it's like when you go buy your house and you go into escrow, you got to have certain things that have to be settled at closing. It's a requirement. You got to pay a year's worth of insurance before when you walk in the door. That type of stuff. Um, cool. So I get to get to talk about something really fun. This is something new. Um, DVC Shop is actually doing a promotion um, for any of y'all because we were joking about this. This is the one time of year where everybody's ready to sell their contracts. <laughs> um, because they got, they're about to get that dues bill and they don't want to have to pay it and they want to get rid of it or whatever. Um, so if you make it, the, the cool thing is they're going to give you a chance to win a trip to Las Vegas. Um, if you, the, it's, the, the rules are pretty simple. If you list your contract with them, you're going to be automatically entered. Cool thing is though, if you're not going to list your contract like me, I'm not going to uh, sell my points right now, but I'm still going to try to take advantage of the promotion. So if you go into that link, if you, you do not, there's no purchase necessary, uh, you can enter at dvcshop.com slash Las Vegas dash promo for a chance to win that trip uh, to Vegas for a five night getaway. Um, so keep that in mind. That's something new. Um, but also, yeah, get with B if you're getting ready to list, because now's the time to start working on that towards before the dues bills actually come due here in two months. So important. Um, and then I'm sure you've got some other uh, resale listings and stuff to share with us. Talk to us. I do. We got. We've got got some really good resale listings. Um, I've got 160 point boardwalk. I've got a 34 point double point contract at Hilton Head. I've got a really nice 225 point at Saratoga. There's a few other contracts that are on the site that are really good. I've got a small beach club, 25 pointer. Um, there's some nice little contracts out there. If you're looking to add on for a few points or if you're looking to get started, if you've got questions, pick up the phone, call me. I'll answer them. If you're not familiar with DVC and need help walking through, we'll be happy to help you. Yep. Um, I will be out for a while, but that, well, I won't be in this time zone for a while. So you guys may have to have some patience with me. <laughs> so um, We also have a dollar off on our rentals uh, for travel dates before February the 28th. And we have uh, $16 point uh, rentals on some of our rental units. And that's through December the 10th. Um, cannot be used with confirmed reservations, only for new reservations. We, we have uh, Ron, hmm, I'm going to kill it. Schmart, Schmart, Schmart. Yeah. Shamert? Sh Shamert. 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 Okay. He says, thanks so much for taking time out of your day to help educate us. We are extremely grateful to all you guys did for us and this amazing DVC community. Ron, we're happy to have you part of our community. Yes. Somebody said the other day they were on the fourth, fifth floor at Bay Lake and wanted to know who was uh, cooking bacon. They were going to go have breakfast. It was one of my clients, Matt Jernigan. And he I said, Matt, you forgot to ask the room number. And somebody said, can we just drop in? I said, we're all DVC family. We can just drop in. <laughs> yep. um, Heather it's, Moran. It, it is really, it's, it's becoming a family situation. Every trip I go on now, I, I run into people and, and I'm not no Kevin McLeod or any of those guys that really have their name out there and people recognize them from a mile away, but it's definitely fun to see people and run into everybody and just, just say hi. Although the masks make it harder. It's harder to recognize people. I don't know. They still find me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, Heather Moran says, sorry if this was asked, can we set up a monthly payments on dues if we buy a resale contract? I have my direct purchase set up on dues to be paid monthly. Yep. No restrictions. The, the, they, they don't care. They, they, want, you, they, want, they want you to make, they want <laughs> you want you to pay. They don't, it's never good for anybody not to pay their dues. So this is one of those things. It's not affecting reservations. It's not affecting, you know, 
their marketability that all those restrictions they put on things or it's just from the DVC trying to, to make them look better than the resale market or whatever it may be. So no, you're good to go. Good to go. Also guys, our IT guy, David Van Norman, he's on here with us tonight. He and his wife have been doing a lot of the um, snacks and cooking it, doing a video, posting it. It has been so much fun to watch. Keep watching for those. There's going to be some Christmas snacks coming out. He did yes. two or three for Halloween. Those, those were fun. <laughs> so you, you make your own Disney snacks at home. That's right. And they even had their three-year-old helping, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We will be back on maybe the 11th or the 12th. Yeah, somewhere, yeah. So I would say, yeah, that, that second the annual meeting. There. Uh, I want to... Depends on how much information I have to digest and prepare. <laughs> um, yeah. If it's pretty simple, it'll be pretty quick. If it's one of those things, it's going to take me a couple of days. It might be like the 13th or 14th, but uh, yeah, we'll get that done. I will, in the meantime, I know I post every year the uh, spreadsheet that kind of does the, the value as far as with the dues component added into current resale prices and where they're at, what the most valuable resale looks like versus direct and stuff. I will get that spreadsheet updated. Um, once we know the full numbers and so you'll be able to see that and I'll tag that in the group as well. I know so, I was playing with that today and was wondering is, is Saratoga still the best value? Yeah, I have a feeling Pauly had kind of edged Saratoga out last year at times. And I think it's definitely going to be that case now because uh, Pauly's increase was really minimal. Um, oh, so it's here two seconds. Polynesian only went up 3.87% and a, a whopping what 26 cents. Yeah, Whereas but their pricing has gone up a little bit more than uh, That's true. And Saratoga. Saratoga went up 24, 34, 35 cents. So, right. yeah, so kind of depending on where resale prices are sitting exactly. And that all, obviously, it varies at times of year, but it's a try to get you. They're going to be close. It'll it'll be one of those two. It is. Well, the best one's always Alani, uh, subsidized. Oh, yeah, if you can find it. If you can yep. find it, grab it. But just yep. remember, you got that exit tax if you ever sell it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so. shoot. You're looking at all Alani's. You're talking almost two, more than $2 uh, a point mm -hmm. so, so yeah. two or, eight or something like that. Yeah. It's, yep. it's a good chunk. It's a little over two. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us from Joe, from me, from everybody. Thank you guys.